So now let's look into class Monogenea. These are going to be external uh, parasitic flatworms, and they're basically mostly found on fish and sometimes amphibians uh, like frogs. So their body is flat, so they're flatworm, but rather than be long, they're actually oval-shaped. And this has to do with a lot of, uh, like, the, the fact that they need to be more streamlined uh, so they don't get pulled or knocked off of uh, their host. Now, uh, when the term that we use for a, a, a parasite that's external, we call this an ectoparasite. Ecto meaning on the outside. But some species, when I said they mentioned that they can affect frogs, they actually live on the inside of frogs and turtles, some turtles. Um, and they actually get inside and they get into like essentially the urinary bladder um, where they just kind of hang out and chill and do their thing. Well, hang out and chill, they're actually feeding off their host. Um, but remember, the, the rule of being a good parasite is to not kill your host. A parasitoid will kill its host. A parasite needs to make sure its host stays alive because that's its food source. So here's a nice picture of them up close. Uh, this is actually the anterior or the head end. Uh, this is the posterior or their foot end. And you can see that they're, that they're just kind of small and they just kind of have a lot going on back here to help them hang on. So, uh, like we mentioned before, these are acelomates. Um, uh, they do have a pharynx and a gastrovascular cavity and a, a mouth slash anus, just like everything else. Their nervous muscle systems are similar to other flatworms. Um, they have a few other features that we'll talk about that make them unique, but again, they, do pretty, they are flatworms, and so they have a lot of other features that all flatworms uh, share. So, there are four different orders of monogenians, and that's the way we tell their orders is basically looking at their body plans, uh, their body shapes and sizes. That helps us determine which of the orders they'll go into. Now, we're not going to study the orders, but just know that the orders of monogene monogenians are determined by their, their body plan and their body shape. So what are the special features that I mentioned that monogenians have? Well, a lot of these features are simply their designs uh, for helping to stay attached to their host. Because remember, most of these are living on the outside of something like a fish. So on the anterior side, they have a thing called a prohaptor. And a prohaptor is basically, it, 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 it's, a, it's a region that has an oral sucker, so just a, um, a, a, a suction cup at the head. and. Um, it's also kind of where their mouth and pharynx is located, which allows them to be able to feed, to be able to move around and be able to feed from different areas on the fish. Um, but on the posterior structure, uh, so this is going to be toward away from the head, so towards the feet, we actually see a very large structure on the tail, so we call this the, uh, uh, the, the caudal end or the caudal tail end, and they call it, this is called an ozothaptor. The ozothaptor is actually, it, it contains many small hooks. It contains uh, uh, two or more large hooks, uh, which sometimes we call anchors. And it also has a variety of suckers all over it. And there's all different types. For example, this is the ozothaptor. It has suckers all over it. This is used to hold on. Here's an ozothaptor that has um, uh, anchors, which are the large hooks. This has got like four. It's got even marginal hooks uh, all around the margins that help it to stay hooked on. And sometimes they'll use a combination of the two in order to stay attached to their host. And so you can look here. This is one that's taken a picture under a microscope. Um, here's the pro haptor. The front end. It's got some suction cups down there. You also you also found the you also find the pharynx. Uh, which is used for feeding, and here on the uh, posterior end, you've got some marginal hooks, you've got two big anchors there, so this is the ozohaptor, which will allow it to stay attached to its host. So here's another diagram to kind of just point out some of the different variations to you, kind of pointing out everything. There's the mouth, the pharynx, it's right there. There's the oral sucker. Uh, here's what it looks like, again, under a uh, scanning electron microscope. Here's a more detailed one pulled up for you. Here's the body, nice and flat. There's the oral sucker, right? Here's some of the, um, look at this, I mean, it just looks kind of scary. It looks like something from another world, right? But here's the ozohaptor. There's the suckers, there's the anchors. Yeah, that guy's not going anywhere once he gets on that fish. And that's good, that's what we want him to do. Uh, they've evolved for that purpose. and. Uh, 
they look pretty well suited for it. So when it comes to reproduction for these guys, um, it can be a little complicated, uh, not the most complicated, uh, but basically um, they spend their entire life on one single host. Um, the eggs, simply when the eggs are hatched, uh, they will, um, they are ciliated, so they're covered with little hairs, and that is what that, that little egg, the little baby will use to help push us up to the water, essentially, uh, it, until it can find its own host, um, in which case it will uh, start to, it'll attach, it'll start to grow and develop, and it will lose the cilia, and then it spends the rest of its life attached to that single host. So, yeah. It's pretty cool. You can see then uh, from the diagram some of the different anatomy that's located in here. Uh, the the, the Ozahaptor still kills me. That's just that's just crazy looking. I love it. Yay, monogenians. So as far as their reproductive uh, um, uh, strategy, how they actually reproduce. Um, I'm going to use one of the, one of the example of one that actually lives inside of a frog's bladder. So we'll just start with the frog's bladder. Inside are some uh, some monogenians. So they go through reproduction and they will uh, uh, release eggs. They release eggs the same time that the frog reproduces and releases eggs. Because when the young monogenians enter the water, they'll hatch and they're ciliated, so they'll swim around. And at that same time, the baby frogs are coming out as tadpoles. So the frogs are in the same water, those polywogs, the tadpoles, are in the same water with these little monogenians. So the monogenian larva can actually find a tadpole and essentially swim up its ur urinary bladder swim up its urethra and, and a lot of stuff in the urinary bladder. Then that frog will keep developing, uh, move out onto land because frogs are amphibious, and it spends a couple years developing and growing and the whole time that um, monogenes on the inside just live in its best life. Now when the frog gets old and gets into sexual reproductive age, its body chemistry changes and hormones start to be released which will drive the frogs to want to reproduce. The monogenean inside the urinary bladder is sensitive to the change in the hormones in the frog and that causes the monogenean to go into reproductive modes as well. Um, so again, these guys generally will reproduce uh, um, uh, sexually, um, with uh, males and females uh, being mono. Well, they're they're um, uh, monoecious, so they're hermaphrodites. So they'll release sperm and egg and, and help fertilize each other's eggs. Because usually there's more than one living inside of a frog. And then the and then that case, about the time they're ready to uh, lay the eggs, so is the frog, and the cycle starts all over again.